be talking about the recent ACL that was released 2332. Um, it was released in March. Um, and the purpose of it was really to clarify how um, to properly document specific placements and locations of all the children, youth, and non minor dependents who were serving through court specified placements facilities and homes. And so this is really making sure that there's uniformity and consistency across all of our counties in terms of how we're tracking that information and that we have real time information um, on where all of our young people are this will obviously help. Um, California is a place with many natural disasters. And so we want to make sure we always know where all of our young people are and also just want to make sure for all of the different purposes. Um, associated with administering the system that we have good data about where our young people are placed um, at all times. And so realize there were some inconsistencies. And so this letter is really intended to make sure that there's uniformity across the state in terms of how we're doing this work. So happy to dig into the details, which I won't be doing today, but I'm joined by many experts um, within our division uh, in order to um, to walk through the details that were in the ACL. So if you can go to the next slide, Emily. I will just let you know sort of what we're going to cover with you today. So we'll do an overview of those documentation requirements, also the timelines and best practices associated with how to do the documentation, like with the time uh, in which that should be happening, the temporary leave page documentation. We're gonna go into some of the specific sort of detailed um, detailed overview of temporary leave page documentation, the non foster care documentation, and how you do facility type selection in that instance, what the other documentation is really what it means and when it should be utilized. Same with runaway or missing and absent from care or left placement without permission, make sure that we're covering exactly what that means and when it should be utilized. The non minor dependent NMD stands for non minor dependent transitional living settings. And then, as Emily said, we'll be leaving time for question and answers at the end of the webinar today. Um, and with that, I think I'm handing it over to um, Dave McDowell, who is going to get into um, the details with you. So take it away, Dave. Thanks so much. Thanks, Angie. And um, again, thanks everybody for participating today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the um, documentation requirements uh, before we get into some of the more technical aspects of how the system deals with uh, with the information. So um, the ACL that was released was really designed to provide guidance to folks about how to use the information in CWS CMS a standardized in a standardized fashion. Uh, we know that there's variation in practice, so we wanted to make sure that everybody's definitions of uh, the placement types that were available were consistent. So <clears throat> we definitely want to make sure that it's accurate. It also, we want to make sure that it's timely. Oftentimes we find that there's um, old information. And again, as Angie alluded to, sometimes it's during disasters or other uh, crisis moments where we realize that the whereabouts of a youth is not known in the system and it, and it creates some challenges for us. Um, so in the letter, we do talk about the documentation best practices. We do talk about what the responsibilities are for documentation and how to do that documentation in CWS CMS. And you'll see on the bottom of the slide, the note that the letter that we released does not cover every placement type and it doesn't cover every documentation option in CWS CMS. Those of you who are uh, practitioners or very familiar with CWS CMS, you know that there's uh, seemingly an infinite number of options for information in the system. Okay, in the next slide. <clears throat> so this describes where the information for the documentation requirements comes from. So we do have information in our MPP Division 31 regulations and also in ACLs that outline what the placing agency's responsibilities are. And you can see here on this list, it's a number of things, including caseworker visits and monitoring of the child or youth uh, with respect to safety, permanency, and well being. 
Uh, it's also the case that if somebody is not managing the case because of a caseworker being absent, we would need to easily identify the placement or the location of the, the youth. And so one of the things that we hear pretty regularly is that the worker knows where the child is, even if it's not represented in the system. But again, you can imagine where those might lead to, to some challenges. Um, so, the placement documentation that we're talking about, you can see at the bottom, uh, there are some things that it should not include. So, it doesn't include a past placement. It doesn't include a facility that's holding a bed for a youth um, and the youth has not been placed in the facility or a placement in which the youth has not resided. So, again, some of the things that don't need to be included in these uh, particular documentation requirements. All right, and then I think that we're turning it over to the technical experts now. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leanna Barubi. I work in the child welfare system branch of um, CFSD. Um, so also in the ACL, we list some best practices um, around the timeliness of docu documenting placement information into CWS CMS. Um, the, the responsibility for documenting placement information in the system is that of the placing agency and to help ensure that you know, we know the whereabouts of each youth in care and um, that we can support their safety while in care. Um, it is best to enter new or changing placement data into the system within 72 hours of that change or new placement and no later than 7 days after that occurrence. Um, and at, you know, as as we've been saying, it's it's really important to have that up to date information in the system, particularly um, during times of emergency or worker absence, and somebody's you know covering covering the case. Um, next slide, please. So we also just wanted to take a moment to remind folks um, about what a placement episode is. It is different from a placement in the system. Um, so a placement episode is the time frame. From the date the youth was removed from their home until um, they have one of these outcomes, either they're reunified with their families, they exit foster care, or the case is closed. Uh, the placement episode should not be closed when a youth is changing placements or changing to or from a non foster care setting. Um, next slide, please. Um, so now we're going to get into the, the specific. Um, uh, documentation scenarios, placement scenarios. So the first one we wanted to talk about was the temporary leave page. Um, so this page in the placement notebook is intended to document when a youth who is in a placement um, will temporarily be staying in another known location. So an example is they're going to visit a relative and spend you know a few nights there or stay overnight at a friend's house, um, but they intend to return back to their placement on record. And so in the placement notebook on the temporary leave page, we're looking for um, the start date of that leave, the expected return date, contact information for anyone that, that's in the, the residence where they'll be staying. And then um, we're also looking for an update to the actual date that the youth returned to the placement. Um, next slide, please. We did receive a, a question after this ACL was published related to the temporary leave page around whether there's a time frame requirement for how long a youth um, must be in a temporary leave location to warrant documentation in CWS CMS. And um, again, it, it all goes back to safety and being able to, to know where a youth is at any given point in time. So it really is very important to document temporary leaves in CWS CMS, regardless of the, the length of that leave. Um, next slide, please. Um, court specified placements are uh, the home of a relative or non-relative extended family member or an extended family member of an Indian child that cannot be licensed or approved as a tribally approved home or a resource family. So to document these in CWS CMS, the worker would create the placement home in the resource management client services section um, and court specified would be selected from the placement type drop down menu. 
then it could be selected as that youth placement. Um, I think next I'll be turning it over to Tara to talk about non foster care documentation. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara I am in the user resource unit. And so, yeah, uh, one of the pieces of the ACL um, it goes over is non foster care um, settings. And so, for uh, CWCMS, um, it calls non foster care setting a non foster care placement. However, uh, we wanted to note that these are not actual placements, um, even though that's what it's called in the system. And so, a non foster care uh, placement, in terms of the uh, technical side, uh, can't be created if there is a current placement that the youth is in. So, whether that's like a um, in a resource family home, relative home, um, if that's open, uh, the non foster care placement cannot be created. And so that placement uh, must be end dated first uh, before uh, opening, uh, creating the non foster care placement. And you can uh, follow the instructions in the ACL or in the CWS CMS training portal. All right. And so now we're going to look at some specific uh, types of non foster care settings. And so uh, here are a couple of the different situations um, where a non foster care setting might be created. Um, however, we wanted to note that this is um, not a comprehensive list um, of everything that's available in CWS CMS. Uh, and so uh, you can, uh, um, we're just going to reference a couple of them to help with our um, documentation so it's clearer um, and we have more consistency across data. And so, as you see here, some of the um, situations like psychiatric facility, um, you can document that as a psychiatric facility, same with juvenile hall. Um, but for settings such as hospital, skilled nursing facility, facility drug rehabilitation facility, um, those can be all list, uh, you can select medical facility as the facility type. Um, and as we said, uh, CWCMS doesn't have every uh, single option or setting that a young person can be in. And so uh, that is when you can select other. And so we're going, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into other. Um, all right, and so some uh, examples that have come up uh, for other um, our travel for office, uh, hotel, Airbnb, couch surfing, homeless shelter. And so um, CWCMS doesn't have an option for all of these. And so this is a time when other can be selected. Um, so pretty much if you don't see the facility type option or the setting option in that drop down, uh, you can select other. Um, however, we do ask that some additional information be provided if that's selected. And so, for example, um, we, it would be important to include the address of the child or youth or NMD. And um, if it's unknown to note that we do not know the address, uh, a description of the facility type. So are they at a hotel? Are they at an Airbnb, um, et cetera? Uh, also the contact information of the location. So phone number, email, um, any information that would be helpful um, to contact the young person and as well as the name of the person that they're staying with, if that's applicable. And uh, we did want to note that this um, slide um, and the ACL talks about other. And so other in this situation specifically refers to non foster care settings and not just any other placement type. So these are all other non foster care types. All right, and so. Now we are going to um, uh, the ACL also goes into um, what um, is commonly known as runaway, um, but we would like to say missing or absent from care or left placement without permission. And so in these situations, so the placement episode um, and initially the placement should remain open um, for the youth who has um, who is absent from care and initially. Uh, the button that should be selected is the AWOL uh, radio button in CWS CMS. Um, however, once um, once it's time to um, close the placement and not the placement episode um, is when we would create a non foster care placement. And so now we're going to go into a couple of the options selection options um, for uh, what um, is called runaway. 
And so if the uh, young person is uh, absent from care prior to the jurisdictional hearing or before the first out of home placement has been created in the placement episode, then the facility type drop down that can be selected is child ran away before placement. And then in the case that the youth um, is absent from placement after um, after there is a placement, uh, whether the whereabouts are known or unknown, then uh, you can select child uh, ran away after placement. And if the whereabouts are unknown, uh, then we do want to make sure we document that as well, that it is unknown, the whereabouts are unknown. And so now I'll uh, pass it back to Leanna. Thank you. Um, so one situation that uh, we did not um, note in the letter that we did want to address today is just a situation where a parent may have absconded with the youth. Um, and there are a number of letters that provide guidance on policies, procedures, documentation, et cetera, um, regarding youth who are absent from foster care, which may include um, an abduction scenario. So we would um, refer folks to those letters for that guidance. Um, next slide, please. And then I think the last um, set of scenarios that we have to talk about today are specific to non-minor dependents in transitional living settings. Um, if an NMD is in a supervised independent living placement, we do actually have an, a placement type option for that in the system. So you would just mark it as a SILP. Um, transitional housing placement programs are marked as foster family agency certified resource family homes or uh, foster family agency certified homes. And then you would also need to check the box for a transitional housing placement program facility and manually type in the name of that THPP facility. Um, the last uh, living setting type is a transitional living setting. And I believe this is a relatively new um, placement type. So it would be marked as the supervised independent living setting as the facility type. You would enter transitional living setting and the name of the TLS in the name field. And as a best practice, we've created a special project code that should be used um, as dash transitional living setting. With that, I think I turn it back over to Emily. All right. Okay, well, we have quickly gone through the content for the webinar, so now we'll move on to the questions. Um, I did put it in the note in the chat, and I'm so sorry, but it looks like we're having some technical difficulties with the chat. And so I noted my email, so if you have any questions, um, if you've already sent them to me, I have received them. But if you have any questions as you've watched this content, um, please submit those to me, and we'll do our best to answer those either today or via the um, FAQ document that we'll be releasing following this discussion, uh, this webinar, I'm sorry. Um, okay, let me, let me go to the ones that we have received thus far. Um, and I did wanna note that we will be sending out this webinar following, I'm sorry, the webinar PowerPoint following today's webinar. So we'll send those to everyone so that you have a copy of this information. All right. So a question that we've received so far is what do we what do we enter if a child ends up not returning to the placement with temporary leave entered? Um, so that's a question that we're going to follow up with via the FAQs document. So we'll have that out to folks as soon as possible. Um, and then we've received regarding non foster care settings. Would this be applicable for a newborn detained at the hospital at birth, but remains in the hospital for some time prior to going to a placement? Um, we just quickly want to refer to some guidance that we issued on that. So we'll also respond to that one via the um, FAQs document. So again, we'll have that back out to folks as soon as possible. We just want to quickly reference that. Um, all right, and then let me take a look. So if there are any additional questions, um, oh, it looks like we did get another one. For the other categories, such as a hotel, motel, office, is there a time frame associated with considering inputting this into CWS as non-foster care, i.e. youth in the office for 12 hours versus youth in the office for 48 hours? 
Dave and Angie, I mean, would you prefer to that we take that one back and respond to that later? That's probably a good idea. I know that there are counties that still follow the guidance that we issued quite some time ago about the definition of a placement and the 23 hour rule. So we'll need to go back and take a look at that guidance and see how it fits in with the documentation requirements. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave. And encourage you to keep putting the questions to Emily, because we can follow up this ACL with an FAQ document in order to help um, drill down on some of these specific questions. I think the overarching goal that we have is making sure that that to the extent we know where the young person is, or even if we don't know, that that is documented as such in CWS CMS. So if there is an open case in the youth is not supposed to be in placement that we're actually documenting where that placement is. And if the youth is unknown that we're documenting that it's unknown if the youth is in a um, hotel or, or, you know, motel or in other unlicensed setting that that's documented as such as other, again, for those safety purposes so that we're able, if there is um, something that happens, we all know exactly where that young person was. Um, at, at least in, in our data system um, as recently as possible um, and that there's consistency in sort of how we're doing that. So as much as possible, it should be associated with um, the actual place where the young person is currently um, residing. Thanks, Angie. All right, and we did receive the question, at what point should we enter the AWOL and end the placement? Can an AWOL be a temp leave? Dave, are you able to take that one? Sure, so we know that county practice is different in whether or not they keep cases and placements open for youth who are um, uh, AWOL. So we're not trying to use this as a vehicle to make the determination of when kids are considered a wall and you close the case or close the placement. So based on your local practice and the decisions that you make in for an, any individual case, we would expect that as soon as you recognize that a youth is a wall, that you would um, make the appropriate notation in CWS CMS. And so that could be a temporary um, or it could be closing the placement and keeping the case open. It could ke be keeping the placement uh, open as well, but the documentation of where would still be important. And so the instructions on if you know that a child is not in uh, placement, but you do know that they are somewhere else to go ahead and document where that somewhere else is. So, for example, sometimes uh, youth are AWOL, but they are at a friend's house and it's known that they're at a friend's house. We would expect you to put that information into the system. I hope that answered the question. Thanks, Dave. All right. And then Tara, I think there was something that you wanted to clarify from an earlier slide. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so uh, we had a slide on uh, if a youth has um, left placement before or after, or had, yeah, before or after placement. Um, and so we just wanted to also clarify that there's some um, this kind of rules in CWCMS of when those drop down drop downs can be selected. And so this is the um, drop down selection for non foster care child ran away before placement. So that option will not be available if the youth has already had a placement in CWCMS. And then also for um, the drop down that child ran away uh, after placement, the that drop down will not be available um, if um, the uh, placement has not yet been created. And so we just wanted to note that as well. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. And then we received the question, what do we use when child is in respite from an FFA? 
another one we can take back if that's not something we have the answer to today. So as Angie said, for many of these, we'll take them back and we can, we'll release these, share this with you, but then also like we release something just to clarify some of this information. All right. And we received the question, when a youth is at a child welfare office, should it be entered as non-foster care? How long does a child need to be in the hospital before we enter it as a non-foster care versus temporarily leave tabs? Um, Leanne, if it's all right, I'm gonna hand that over to you. Sure, I think I can answer part of that today. Um, yes, so when a youth is at the child welfare office, it, it should be documented as non foster care and you would use that other as the facility type and then just type into the facility type description um, child welfare office. And I think it also requires um, like an address uh, and uh, the comments field I think is also required. Great, thanks so much. All right. Okay. Oh, and we received the question, can you show us where the temporary documentation goes again? Did it show on the slide? Carlyan, is there a slide I should go back to on this one? I don't believe we had any screenshots for that one, but um, the temporary leave page is in the placement notebook. Um, so I wonder if we, I can take a look in the ACL and see if we have a, um, a screenshot in there and provide that reference. That's great. Yeah, we can, um, we can definitely take a screenshot of it for the document that we'll be sending out after this. So we'll follow up with that as well. Oh, yeah, I can add the temporarily pages. Yeah, it, it, it can confirm it's in the placement notebook and there is a screenshot on page 5. Okay, All right. Okay. Just taking a look at some of the questions that are coming in. Making sure we've either responded to those or that them here. Um, we did receive one that says, how will the other manual entry be stored? Will safe measures be able to access this field or will it be like the notes and encrypted? Dave, do you know that one? Which question was that? I'm sorry. Okay. The question was, how will the other manual entry be stored? Will safe majors be able to access this field or will it be like the notes and encrypted? So the fact that it's other will be captured, but I don't think that the specificity of what that other is is something that safe measures will necessarily capture. If it's something that we want to look into to have put in there, we can have the discussion with evident change to see if that can be done from the technological perspective. Okay, thank you. All right. And um, just noting the question that I raised earlier that um, Liana, answered the first part of um, the second part about the hospital, we will respond to that one um, via the FAQs document that will come out. Um, so more to come on that. I'm not seeing any additional questions coming in at this time. So for the one, so um, we still have a couple slides, so please submit any additional questions that you do have. For the ones that we read that we don't have a response to today, we'll be following up um, via that document. And then, um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide and I'll hand it back to Tara. Hey, everyone. Um, so 
uh, as you can see here on this slide, there are a couple of additional resources. Um, and so for CWS CMS uh, training, uh, the training portal and uh, instructions on documenting different items in CWS CMS, you can go to the CWS CMS training portal. Um, it's linked in the slides that will be sent out. Um, and you can go to new user curriculum and uh, you will be prompted to create a login if you haven't already. It should accept your um, government email and um, then most of the documentation around placement should all be under the uh, placement new user curriculum and it should have um, other resources resources as well, such as uh, process maps um, and release notes for recent uh, CWS CMS uh, system changes that came out in releases. Uh, and then additionally, um, as Dave said, since the ACL didn't cover every single placement um, or setting that a youth can be in, we uh, linked some additional um, other all county letter and all county information notice uh, guidance uh, below. So um, if you have more questions about like policy and documentation regarding um, these specific placements, um, such as tribally approved homes, um, out of state residential facilities, um, anything like that, you can refer to these ACLs here. And they're also, uh, many of them are also linked in the uh, ACL. Awesome. All right. Well, that concludes the content from today's webinar. Um, so again, if anyone wants to submit any just final questions in our last few minutes here, I'm happy to try to read those out, um, but I'm not seeing any additional ones come in. Um, and we will um, get to working on responding to the questions that did come in today that we weren't able to answer during um, the webinar. But thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, for any additional questions, you can reach out to the following um, email addresses that are listed here for data entry questions. We have the child welfare system branch, um, the user, user resource unit, um, and then for placement policy questions, we have the family reunification and pathways to permanency policy unit. Um, so again, I will be sharing out these slides at the conclusion of today's webinar. Um, so we will send these out to everyone. We will have the webinar posted to our CDSS YouTube page um, in probably the next couple of weeks here once it's been made accessible. Um, I'll also share out a link to that page when I share out these PowerPoint slides. Um, we will take these questions back and we'll start working on a document that answers them and we'll share them out with these folks and then possibly via some additional guidance. So we'll get that back out to folks and as soon as possible. All right. Well, thank Elaine, you. If oh, I yeah. If I could interrupt really quickly, um, there was a question that had come in about uh, whether the non foster care placements impact the placement counts and non foster care placements in CWS CMS do not advance the placement counter. Oh, thank you so much, Dave. Thanks for clarifying yes. that. Um, yeah, and then before I formally wrap up, I don't know if Angie, Dave or Leanne or Tara, if anyone wants to add anything. I would just say thank you for joining us today in the time. And this isn't your only opportunity to ask questions. So please send additional questions to those email addresses. Um, as Emily said, we'll work on additional FAQ document to answer all of the questions and make sure that that continued guidance um, is getting to all of you. So we appreciate your time um, today and attention to all of this. And we appreciate your questions uh, most of all. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great afternoon.